with all the heartache, all the hard work, why a bus? Maximalist mini bus with Mary and Captain and you. Get on the bus! Schooly Scouts. I'm feeling better than I did on that last video. For one thing, I have Max back. He's not 100%. The wiggle is still, well, it's maybe 90%. 85 probably. But I don't feel like I'm going to veer into the car in the next lane anymore, so it's, I don't think it's unsafe, so that's that's good. And there's still that underlying issue, but I think I have it figured out. Once it's all resolved, I'll tell you what I thought it was and what it actually was. So there's just no point in talking about it till I know, because it's just been, been too much dark talk lately, and I probably should not have made a video when I was feeling that dark. I always come back up, right? I think that video maybe seemed like a little more of a cry for help than I meant it to be. That said, I am so grateful for a couple of people who sent me PayPal's and Venmo's. Bob K was incredibly generous on PayPal. Thank you, Bob. Annika sent a little something. Well, not a little. Annika sent something on Venmo. Thank you, Annika. I got applause from Shining Out Light. Thank you. And I got another applause, but I don't know who it's from because whoever you are, you didn't say who you were, but thank you. And then a ton of you came through with the moral support, which is really the key. Gina, Dawn, Susie, Tim, both of the cats, all three cats, and the dogs. Kathy, Mara, Other Mary, Brad, James, even Camo Dave got in on it. Um, I should stop there because if I name too many people, but I can't name everybody, then somebody's going to feel left out. But I have to mention Tim C., who took time out of his incredibly busy day to talk to me on the phone about all this, and Road Trick Rich, who always goes so above and beyond. Uh, when he weighs in and gives me so much perspective. I thought that I would just take a few minutes today to address something that came up in the comments, something that always comes up whenever there's bus trouble. The big question that people always ask, with all the heartache, all the hard work, why a bus? Pack your bags and fire up the engine Drive until you why not a nice van, you know, like a no-build build, whatever. You don't really need a bus to be a nomad. Isn't it just about getting out there? Isn't it just about the freedom? How can you be free in a beast of a vehicle that likes to break down? And this is a valid question. I'm not going to pretend it isn't. But first of all, Max is a 4350, so basically he's a big van anyway. And all vehicles break down. It's not just Max. I have actually done a fair amount of van traveling in the past. I had a Dodge Caravan for a long time, and then I also had what I called the Mango Smoothie, which was a huge E450 van, probably almost as big as a bus anyway. And um, those vans got me a lot of places. But before Max, I had never had a vehicle that I would have even thought to call a home. Max is a home. Part of it has to do with the path I took to get to him. I was looking into tiny homes when the schoolies came on my radar and I have always loved repurposed things and vintage things and I was closing down my vintage store so it just kind of seemed like the perfect transition for me to go into a vintage bus. The aesthetics of my surroundings are really important to me. I could never be happy living out of plastic bins that I'm going to pull out from under a cot. Well, I mean, I could be happy, but it would never be my choice. Let me just put it that way. If I have a choice, I'm always going to pick something that adds to my experience as opposed to something that's a neutral. And I think a lot of people with the no build builds, they want that aspect of life to be a neutral so they can experience other things. I get it. It's just not how I think. So why not an RV? Why was that never on my radar? Well, for one thing, they're not as customizable as the buses are. Personally, I don't think they're as safe. I'm not going to get into the reasons why I feel that way. RVs are a little overly complex for me. Like, I don't need a black tank and an electric water pump. I'm fine with my foot pump sink and my bucket toilet and all that stuff. And, I mean, if I need to, if I'm going to be in a position where I can plug into shore power, I'm just going to run an extension cord out the window. I don't need a lot of the trappings that RVs come with. And, of course, that brings us back to vans. And, you know, yes, I've had vans, but I never tricked one out. So maybe if I had tricked out a van, I would have fallen in love with it. Maybe. But there's the standing up thing, and that rules out like half the van. I'm only five feet tall, but I need to be able to stand up. I'm not interested in stooping inside of a space that's gonna be called home. I'm kind of a homebody, I guess. I, I need a nest. You hear van dwellers say a lot of times, I don't live in my van, I live out of my van. I live in my bus. I spend a lot of time on a computer because I work, and that is much more conveniently done if you have an indoor space to do it in. 
it's not that I don't spend time outside, it's just that it's more convenient to be able to have an indoor space to work in. And then I feel more of a pull toward small town America, the history of the country, more than I feel pulled to go far into the backwoods. I've taken Max's some rugged spots, believe me, he's no slouch with that stuff, but I haven't yet hit a place that I really wanted to go and couldn't because of the bus. I'm not saying that I'm, you know, this is it for the rest of my life, but right now having a place where I can be inside in case the weather's crappy, for example, it's pretty important because I might be in places where there's actual winter. And of course, another thing people bring up is lack of stealth. I don't really care about stealth. I mean, if I did, I wouldn't live in this circus wagon, but you'd be surprised how much stealth I've actually been able to pull off in this thing. So then we come to the money, and yes, you end up putting a lot of money into an old bus, but you put a lot of money into an old van, too. Max cost $2,500, and his transmission went in the first three months, so that was like another $2,500. So I consider my initial outlay to be about $5,000, and you could get a pretty good van for that money, yeah, but it's still an old van and any old vehicle is a crapshoot. Um, I probably put about $10,000 in it over the course of the next three years, but I'm gonna venture to say that a lot of people who buy a van put in about the same amount. And I, I think the thinking about this comes from the fact that of course, you wouldn't put $2,500 into a thousand dollar car, but I don't think you can judge it the same way, especially if you've done a really personal, really customized build. I think of it more the way someone thinks of a house. Like, let's say your house gets termites. Do you just say, okay, time for a new house and walk away? Most people, I think, hire an exterminator. They get it tented if they have to. And I know a lot of people become nomads to move away from those kind of responsibilities, but I've never owned a house, so I'm not running from that particular nightmare. Max has got almost no rust, which is hard to find, and God knows if I stay here in New England much longer, that's probably not gonna be true anymore, but at this point, if he became completely unviable mechanically, I could still park him somewhere and use him as a guest house. My build is such that I could pull it out and put it in another bus, but then you're back to the crapshoot of like, what is gonna happen with this bus? And the condition that Max is in, it would take a lot for me to really consider getting rid of Max. Now, if that condition changed a lot, if I made a lifestyle change, that might be different. But I'm a schooly girl. With all the heartache and all the hard work, why a bus? Well, I could live without the heartache, but the hard work, that's why I chose a bus. I have loved every minute of turning this bus into my home. Everything about it delights me. And I know how every single thing in it works because I did it myself. I don't know how to do any of this, and I did it. And that's why I chose the bus. If that appeals to you, you might be a schooly girl too. If that makes you say, oh Lord, no, that's not what I want, then you need to start looking for that van or RV. Those of us that are schooly girls, we know. We know who we are. I want to say thank you to everybody who gave me comments on that last video, even the ones that were sounding the death knell for Max, because you all helped me cement. Yeah, he's not going anywhere. We'll see you next time. Meet Max and Captain. See you next time.